It is the start of a new vlog, and if you're here from my last vlog, then you know I'm in the exact same position in the exact same clothes. So I basically am starting this as I end the last one. So the last one was themed for spooky season, and this one is going to be themed fantasy romance. I haven't done a fantasy romance vlog in a while, but you know I love my fantasy romance series. So um Hi guys, I wanted to take a second to talk about the Dream app, which is a great platform for relieving mental stress when you're going through a hard time and read some really great romance novels. I think that reading can be really cathartic and a way to pay attention to your emotions, the way that you are expressing your emotions, to release any emotions that you have pent up and to help gain mental clarity and a healthy mindset. Dream is an app that I can go to to read some romance novels on my phone when I'm just laying in bed and relaxing and just a really easy way to immerse myself in some new beautiful stories. Dream has some books with amazingly strong heroines as well as some just beautiful and touching love story. Dream is really focused on catering to their woman audience and has a bunch of stories for their woman readers and they really understand women's hearts and they are focused on having stories that are catered to a spectrum of emotions where you can release your emotions and be comforted. Whether you are lonely, you have insomnia, you're happy, you're anxious, or any kind of emotion, you can find a dream novel that suits your mood and have a happy time reading dream love novels. So please go check out the Dream app in the link that I have down below. And thank you so much to Dream for sponsoring this video. Um, here's the thing though. I read a lot of fantasy romance on my Kindle and on my travels. I love my Kindle in the airport. And I've gone through a lot of Kindles because my dog has eaten like three of them. And I can't believe I lost it. And... It, I don't know I'm just a mess um I contacted the airline and put in a lost item claim and like I had stickers on it that should like help differentiate it so hopefully it gets turned in I'm also going to like double check my suitcase and my car and just see if maybe I missed it in one of those places um but yeah so I'm this is just this is good for me because I will focus on <laughs> reading all of the physical books that I have that I haven't read yet of which there are many so um, I kind of wanted to go through and I have a series of like fantasy romance books I want to read um, as a overall like series that I've been doing. The next one in that series should hopefully be out already. I think that should be like out in the order of videos that like I wanted to post. Um, but I wanted to go back to like the first video and start reading some of the series that I had put on that list and hadn't read. This book, I actually think this book might be from the second video in that series, um, but I've heard a lot about it and I, it's been on my mind lately, so I was like, you know what, I, this could be the time to pick it up. And sh this author also has had a new book come out that looks really cool. And also I have some buddy reads coming up in like a week and a half, so I don't want to pick up anything that's like multiple part series um so i think this one is like different standalones and it is feather by olivia wildstein and it is basically described as romeo and juliet with angels so i had actually reached out to this author for um like a copy of this book to feature in my video so i got some cool goodies with it um these are the characters these are more character cards Da, da, da. So what is the synopsis? So L Lee goes to meet her newest project, who's a 25-year-old named Gerard. He leads the Parisian Mafia. Mafia. Um, and he's also the worst kind of sinner, a triple. If Lee can get Gerard to accomplish a single act of kindness, she stands to win a hundred feathers, which will complete her wings and she will ascend to Elysium, the land of angels. And so, but she doesn't count on Gerard's dark charm costing her feathers. She's dead set on saving him and he's dead set on destroying her. So I've been read a lot of fantasy romance with angels, but um, my friend, Roses are Red, Mary, um, from 
TikTok and Instagram. I don't think she has a YouTube. But anyways, so she has read the series and said it was really great. And I'm like, I've owned this series for a long time. And I talked about it in a YouTube video. And I haven't read it yet. So this is going to be the starting point for this video. And I'm not going to lay down any more groundwork for any other books that I want to read in this video. Because I want the wind to just carry me on, it, on its wings and take me where it may lead me. Um, and I do think that the next book in this series is like following a different couple. So there's that. Um, there's also a sequel that is coming out tomorrow that I may purchase. So that may be in a future unboxing, but I'm not gonna say anything yet because I kinda, I'm just gonna go based on vibes, like if I'm gonna buy it and like read it right away. Um, other things that I want to talk about is I, so I'm moving and I need to organize all my books. So I need to sell a lot of them. I was gonna get the energy to like take product pictures tonight, but um, I already took energy making YouTube videos, making this video, so it's not happening tonight. However, let me show you some things that I have acquired lately. So here, I'm very excited about this. So Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. I did not buy the Waterstones edition when it came out. And then I saw the Heart of the Sun Warrior. I, well, first of all, I read this book and I loved it. I thought it was gorgeous and beautiful. And I had seen that the Heart of the Sun Warrior Waterstones was like out to buy. And I'm like, ooh, like I really kind of want to buy that. But I didn't have the first one. So I finally found like a cheap listing. Well, not cheap, but like relatively normal compared to what you I would have paid for this on um, if I had bought it originally. So I purchased this. It has this nice sprayed edge. It's not the fairy loot one, but I still really enjoy this one. And so um, Heart of the Sun Warrior is coming out in... November and I will be getting that cool sprayed edge edition when it arrives. Other exciting things that I've added to my collection is you guys know that I am a big Margaret Rogerson fan. So here we have the French edition of Enchantment of Ravens with a Charlie Bowater cover, which the original cover is also Charlie Bowater, but just like a different style. So like the US cover is like on the inside here. And then this is what the hardcover looks like and then on the back we have this um and and the, again this is the french edition so you can get it on france amazon france i also have the sorcery of thorns one um somewhere in this pile this is what started this journey is i saw this book and i was like this needs to be mine so sorcery of thorns french edition and nathaniel and silas on the back and again you like open it and that's like the u.s cover um and then this one has a cool like interior dust jacket but it also has this like embossed cover do i know a word of french no but i just bought it for the cover so i'm really excited to have like these foreign editions in my collection and i this is not normally something that i would like buy for a collection but because this is like my favorite author obviously i had to support this came in, this is the City of Bones 15th Anniversary Edition. I have the 10th Anniversary Edition, so obviously I gotta keep going with that theme. Red, White, and Royal Blue Collector's Edition. I love Casey McQuinston, I love this book. So cute, so it's history, huh? Cute little illustrations here. Obviously it's in hardcover when the original only came out in paperback. And it's signed. This one, I'm continuing my collection of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith. Um, this is the BNN and exclusive cover. So I have like read this book, this comic, like almost completely. I think there's been a few episodes that I haven't caught up on, which I don't, maybe I'll wait for a while until they're released physically. Although I'm kind of just like waiting for all of these books to be released physically so that I can just like kind of binge them all in one go. But when I've been telling you, I have been reading this comic series on Webtoon since 2018 and it's been like my favorite thing ever. Um, I am so excited that it's getting like physical prints and ugh, I just love it so much. And so I've been slowly collecting all of these. Maybe this also kind of makes me want to pick up Monstrous, which I have right here. Um, I really enjoyed this comic series as well and I haven't picked it up in like a few years. So I could do that. I have some comic series that I haven't picked up in a while that I would enjoy reading. So anyways, that's my plan. We're going to start with good old Feather here and then we'll keep you updated on my fantasy romance shenanigans. Okay, so last night I started Feather by Olivia Wildstein. I think I gave the plot synopsis in my last clip, but I got to page 123 and it's really interesting so far. 
Lei is an angel and you basically have to like help sinners to earn your feathers and there's I won't like spoil it but she basically needs to get her last 81 feathers in a very short amount of time so she decides to go and try and help a triple which is someone that's worth 100 feathers the highest level of sinner um to earn her last 100 feathers so she can ascend to Elysium which is essentially heaven um so she picks this guy that is the head of the Parisian mafia his name is Gerard and he's the head of the mafia so like clearly he's a sinner um so she goes and she tries to like get an audience with him and he's like what is going on and it's kind of just like them beginning to interact like this book is very long so i'm sure lots of other things will go on but it's also a romeo and juliet retelling so i'm not exactly hopeful but we'll see <laughs> hopeful for the ending being happy um but it is like a long series and i think the the series overall has like a happy ending um but yeah, and then we also get to see, like, it's also a setup for, like, the next book, which is following these other two characters. Um, and they're, like, very intertwined in this story. So I feel like it's, like, very well done. Like, the world building is so cool. First off, we're starting with, like, the angels and, like, in the Angels Guild and, like, learning about all the angel stuff. And then we are, boom, in the middle of Paris. And we have, like, Paris Mafia vibes. So it's, like, combining a lot of interesting things. And I think it's really, really intriguing so far. Okay, so two quick updates. The first update being I got to page 287 of Feather. This is like this metallic-y hardback that I love. This book is absolutely amazing. I just got to some steamy scenes yesterday and I thought that they were so well done. Like you were really like connected with the characters and like the way that they were described, you just like, oh, so good, so good. Like I just love fantasy romance. And like I said, the whole like angels meets mob mafia aspect is really really cool so it's definitely a little bit dark and there are some surprising twists and i of course ordered the next two books right away because i'm like i'm gonna want to pick up the next one as soon as i finish this so my next my next update is on a life one the boston book festival is happening right now so i did have a bit of a busy morning i went to the gym i had to go into work and i came back showered ate and now i'm going to head to the boston book fest there's like a place that you can walk around with tents and booths and stuff like that and then i'm going to a panel at 3 15 for uh with elizabeth Lim who wrote six from the cranes kristen cashore who wrote graceling and rory powers who wrote wilder girls so I'm very excited to go and hear them talk and even if I can only go to the festival for a little bit because I've had like a really busy day, um, I'm really excited. Also it's all like free and it's in like a very well accessible area so I'm about to hop on the tea, probably bring my physical book with me and just enjoy the day. Hello, it's time for an update so let's chat. Okay, so I'm on the floor amongst all of my books which is reminding me that I need to do some work on cleaning these up. So. If I film on the floor, that's hopefully motivating to myself. Um, okay, so I did finish Feather by Olivia Wildstein and five stars. Five stars all around. It was literally so lyrical, magical, beautiful. It was such a heartbreaking story of like love and redemption. And I really feel like the magic system was so cool, so unique. And the combination of the angels and the mafia was really really cool and this is a romeo and juliet retelling and the ending so i just loved everything about this so so much so of course i wanted to read the next one right away but i ordered it and it didn't arrive until today so that left me like a day with a gap i was supposed to get them yesterday and they didn't arrive and i was so sad so in the meantime i read this book taken by the dark elf king by charlotte swan this is a book that i found on tiktok because i follow the author there and she's been posting about it it's about a dark elf king that basically invites the light elves into his land after like years of separation and he kind of like tricks the princess into a marriage but it, there's just like so much more to it and like it had some really fun tropes and really fun spice with some things that i enjoyed a lot so if you're looking for like a good i this is kind of considered like monster romance um i guess because he's like a dark elf not 
like a humanoid elf i enjoyed it a lot and like it was actually really heartwarming and cute and i was like very surprised by how much i liked it and it's really short it's only like 200 something pages so i flew through it and i read it on my phone because i don't have my kindle back i don't think it's ever coming back so i bought a new one and that should be here tomorrow so that is what it is okay so i have some things to unbox here so first of all here's this package and it's from tor and it is legends and lattes by travis baldiri um i think this kind of like started a cozy fantasy kick on tiktok and this is basically about like um a battle weary orc who's opening the first ever coffee shop in a city and then i think she has like a little assistant helping her with the uh, coffee shop and she just like meets all these travelers along the way so it's like a low stakes fantasy <sighs> so cute um and i got this little sticker set. i'm gonna cry i'm so excited this tour edition is really pretty like whatever gloss they put on it is so nice um and so yeah it's just it's just supposed to be cozy and that makes me so excited, especially with the colder months coming up. Um, and it's also described reviews as a love letter to queer D&D players. A gentle little cozy set against an epic fantasy backdrop. Charming. Like, look at those cute little reviews. So next is a package from Waterstones that I wasn't expecting to arrive. So I don't know what's in it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This has taken a while to arrive. It is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books of the year, and I knew I also needed to get the UK edition just to collect because you guys know I love to collect books. So this is the front. Oh, my tea is ready. Alexa off. I read this in my last vlog, but it's about a girl who can see and touch death where no one else can, and it's their story, and it's so beautiful. Beautiful writing, I just like loved everything about it, so definitely a standout of the year for me, and so I'm really excited to also have this beautiful UK edition. Okay, and now what we are all here for, I thought I brought scissors with me, I don't know where they went. So we're just gonna do this the old fa uh, fashion way and open it with my hands. Oh, they're here, they're here, they're here. Okay. So I have these two beautiful books. This one being Celestial, which is the second book oh, yeah. in the Feather Trilogy. Ooh, and there's art in it. Um, and then starlight and it looks like we'll be introduced to new characters and so whoa my camera just battery just died so fast i need to get new batteries anyways these are the next two books that i will be reading because feather just took me away with how beautifully it was written like everything about it was so amazing oh hold on wait 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 wait, 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 wait. <gasps> what 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 i I was not expecting that. Oh my goodness. I guess I will have to repurchase the first book in these like new hardcover editions if they have character art on them. Um, because obviously I need them all to match, but like that's like an eventually thing I'll eventually get in, but that is really cool. Anyways, that is it for my little mini haul. Yes, I have a book buying problem, but I'm trying to curate my selection collection to what I really want it to be. and. I almost feel like it's not worth going through all of my books right now because I'm about to move into a bigger apartment with so much more room for books. So, it is what it is. I just finished Celestial, which is the second book in the Angels of Elysium series, and I'm like an, I'm like an emotional mess right now. Like, it is so unique, it is so complex. The angel system is just like amazing and like I can't even say anything about this book because that would be major spoilers for the first book but then the third book I'm about to start and I'm like <sighs> like I just love these characters so much and the world and like 
because all the emotions that I'm feeling, like they have to overcome so much and it is such a beautiful and well done story. And I literally, I want to scream this from the rooftops, how good it is and make everyone read the series because it deserves to be like up there and be like famous. Like it is so, so good. So like it's about time where the sun is going down, which is only like 5.30 because winter. Um, but it's weirdly 70 degrees. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to start the next one, which is Starlight, which is the third and final book in this trilogy. And just the things that Olivia Wildenstein is able to do in this book. Wow. She has a new one out too called House of Beating Wings. And I think this is like a, that's a Faye one. And I will be picking that one up soon. But yeah, I'm just like totally in my fantasy romance, like grind back to reading all of these books and I could not be happier. I also have my new Kindle and I am reading Vow of the Shadow King, Vow of the Shadow King, yeah, which is the sequel to Bride of the Shadow King. Um, and that one, I talked about my fantasy romance for Rec video, which is out, so you guys should go watch because I love, love, love making those videos. Um, but that one, it's about Ferrain. What's really cool about that is her like ability to feel emotions actually kind of almost manifests in like a disability where she gets like really overwhelmed by the sensory aspect of like feeling everyone's emotions. And I thought that that was so interesting. Like we've never seen like a power be like almost like a disability. Um, so I thought that was like so unique and like the way that it's explored is very interesting. But yeah, so the Shadow King who's like a troll but like a hot troll <laughs> they're just like hot fey but like they live in the rocks and like they come to like make a treaty and so he has to like marry one of the the king's daughters like for the treaty but for rain like isn't the favorite at all so like the king doesn't really care about her and um but they like have a connection and uh, it just goes into so much more and i don't want to give away the plot but it definitely ended on an exciting note and not exciting like a cliffhanger and so i'm excited to read the second one and see like what happens with these two characters like it's definitely like the world is really really cool like we're in this like rock world i think it's so awesome and i think it's gonna get a little bit steamier sylvia mercedes books just like in general are on the more tame side which is fine I just know that like going into it but i do think that she mentioned that she wanted to make this uh sequel like a little bit spicier so that could potentially be happening great spice great spice just the perfect trifecta of plot world building and spice amazing so those are my plans but yeah i just i'm in my feels i'm in my feels reading that and like i'm just reading this book being like this is so good like it's so good i just love the series so much i honestly just wanted to pick up the camera because i finished starlight this is this is not great lighting um i finished starlight which is the, which is the last book in the angels of elysium series it's a trilogy I'm a little emotional like it was just so good and it was so beautiful oh like the ending and like oh my god am i crying i'm actually kind of crying <laughs> uh, oh. oh my god okay Whew. um i'm probably gonna turn my camera back on in the morning to give like more cohesive thoughts but this series was everything to me hello pals so it's been a while since i turned on my camera Honestly, my room is a mess behind me because we are in the process of getting ready to move, so just like just ignore it, you know? But I did want to come and give my like final cohesive thoughts on Starlight. So this book focused on Naya and Adam, and like I can't even go into their backstory, but each book in this series has like a very unique storyline and premise and takes you to a lot of different locations. Um, so it did feel like very three distinct books with a still like cohesive story arc and the things that Olivia Wildenstein was able to do with Naya and Adam's characters are absolutely amazing and I've never seen an author do something similar or even attempt something similar and 
I, I just feel like the payoff, like the emotional payoff was so good. Um, this is definitely going to go down as one of my favorite fantasy romance, par paranormal romance series of all time because it's just like heartbreaking, heartbreaking, angsty, like written so well and like just so, so good. I love the whole system of like these fletchling angels, they have to earn feathers to, you know, be able to ascend to Elysium where they like can take on other angelly duties and like discrepancies between hybrids and like purebred verity angels and like just a very cohesive and cool world so you have that element and then you also have like the urban element and this took us to some interesting new locations and I don't even want to give anything away but like just what she was able to do with this book in particular the way that it tied up the whole entire series was absolutely amazing. I have two options of the next fantasy romance book that I want to take on. This one has a sequel that just came out, so I, if I started this one and I like it, I would probably order the sequel right away, whereas this one is the sequel that just came out to a book that I read a while ago and liked, so I don't know which one I'm going to read. I'm going to probably put it up in a poll on my Instagram and I will either ignore the poll and just do what I want to do, but the poll will let me know which choice I'm leaning towards, or maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll see the outcome in the poll, you know? So. These are the two choices. I'm going to keep this fantasy romance vlog going for a little bit longer because I am waiting for Keely to be ready to buddy read something that will be the focus of my next vlog. But it's been like kind of hard for me to vlog because of the time change. Honestly, like the sun just sets so early and I left work a little bit early today. But usually when I get home, like there's no sunlight to vlog with. And then like I just feel like I don't have like a good casual setting besides like my like actual setup by my bookshelves to do vlogs in and it sucks when the lighting isn't good. Maybe this won't like make sense to you guys as viewers but if you are a content creator you know like it's just like very hard to find motivation to do it if you know like the quality like isn't gonna come out good. But yeah so that's why my vlogging like the, that's why I tend to do vlogs that are a little bit more sporadic over time. One so I have more things to talk about in between clips. And two, because sometimes I just don't have time to vlog every single day, like that's just not the reality of my life. But I'm hoping when we move and I have like a book room set up, like I will have such a cozier setup with like better lighting and like it will just be ideal for me as a reader and everything I've ever wanted in life. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, interesting. So yeah, that's it for today. So we'll see. I, I feel like I'm kind of leaning towards this one, but I guess you'll see in the next clip which one I choose. All right, so I wanted to do a quick outro clip because despite what I said in my last clip of picking up another fantasy romance, it turns out that Keely was ready to buddy read Caravel with me. So my next vlog will be a Caravel reading vlog where I read the entire series for the first time. So please keep an eye out for that. But I hope that you have enjoyed my fantasy romance reading vlog. I absolutely love fantasy romances. So I am really excited to continue making this kind of content because I feel like this is my niche. Let me know what you thought of this vlog down below. I love hearing from you guys. Leave a angel emoji if you got this far and have some fun. Read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.